Our review for unit two. So unit two review. All right. So first thing what we're talking about is the periodic table. So an element's placement on the periodic table indicates chemical and physical properties. of the element. Two. Question is on just about every region. Elements are arranged in order of atomic number. The atomic number is the number of protons and that identifies the element. The atomic mass is the sum of protons plus neutrons in the nucleus. So the sum of protons plus neutrons is the atomic mass. From that, the number of neutrons is equal to the atomic mass minus the atomic number. Which is the atomic mass minus the number of protons gives you the number of neutrons. And electrons do not add to the mass would basically say that the mass of an electron is pretty much zero. Okay. Now the mass number or the atomic mass on the periodic table is a weighted average of the different isotopes of the element. Okay. Isotopes are identified by the sum of protons plus neutrons. Now remember the definition of isotopes. Same number protons, different number neutrons. So some examples of an isotope, right, if we talk about carbon 14, right, we take 14, which is the mass of carbon 14, minus the atomic number for carbon, which is 6, is 8 neutrons. And carbon-14 can be written like this, can be written out, carbon-14, can be written as C-14 for carbon-14, can also be written carbon-14 or carbon-14 with the atomic number there like so. Okay. Elements can be classified by their location on the periodic table. Right. And this we should know by now. All right, we have the staircase here. Anything below the stairs is classified as a metal. Everything above the stairs is classified as a non-metal. Remember that Hydrogen is an exception that technically kind of belongs over here next to helium. It is a 
non-metal. Things on the stairs are metalloids, except for aluminum. So our basic examples from metalloids, boron, silicon, germanium, uh, arsenic, antimony are the main examples we're going to use for metalloids. Uh, properties of metals. Metals, uh, I'll go back to here so I can write it for you. Okay, so metals conduct heat and electricity. They're malleable, it means if you hit them with a hammer, they'll bend. Uh, ductile, they can be drawn into a wire. Non-metals don't conduct heat or electricity. Instead of being malleable, they're brittle. They are not ductile. Okay? Metals also have luster, or they are lustrous. And non-metals are not lustrous. They do not have luster. Okay. Now, elements are also arranged into periods, right, which is the rows, and groups, which is the columns. Now, you have to remember that elements in a group have the same number of valence electrons. Okay, so elements in a group have the same number of valence electrons and similar chemical properties. Elements in a period have the same number of occupied energy levels or shells. All right now we have to know the names of some of these groups. All right, we have to know group 1, group 2, group 17, and group 18. All right, so group one is the alkali metals. Group two, alkaline earth metals. Uh, group 17, halogens. And group 18, the noble or inert, meaning they don't react, gases. They have full valence shells. Okay, next we have to talk about trends. Okay, so if we look at our periodic table here, right, as we go across in a group, what happens? Well, as we go across in a group, ionization energy increases, electronegativity my abbreviation for it, increases. So across ionization energy, which is the energy required to remove an electron, increases. Electronegativity increases. Also as we go in across in a group, atomic radius I'll write this up. Atomic radius and metallic character both decrease. So going across in a group, as atomic number increases from left to right, atomic radius and metallic character decrease. So ionization energy and electronegativity go together. Atomic radius and metallic character go together. Now going down in a group, everything's the opposite. So ionization energy and electronegativity both decrease atomic radius 
and metallic character both increase. Now the atomic radius and the metallic character both increase because there's more shells, so it's going to get bigger. Going across, the atomic radius decreases because the pull of the nucleus is pulling harder on the electrons, pulling them in closer to the nucleus. All right, finally, some elements, that's an M, exist in two or more forms in the same phase. All right, they differ in molecular or crystal structure. A right. couple of examples. Carbon can exist as graphite. G-R-A-P-H-I-T-E. Graphite, which is kind of in sheets. Or it can exist as diamond, which is a lattice, crystalline structure. Another example is oxygen, O2, versus ozone, O3, okay? And these are referred to as allotropes. All right, that brings us to the end of our Unit 2 review video. I will see you guys in school.